Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lesbian Talk Shows for Love and Money. I'm your host, Rady Magden, and today we're doing a little bit of a departure from our usual content. Normally, my advice and my interviews are aimed at authors who are looking to make wider audiences for their books. Today, we're branching out into new territory. We're going to talk about how to find wider audiences for films and other LGBT storytelling methods. And in that vein, we have some incredible guests today to talk about their project, Seasons of Love. We have Kristen Baker, who's the director of Seasons of Love. We have Danielle Jablonski and Ashley Arnold, who are both producers. We have Kat Trammell, who is the writer of this amazing project. And I'm so excited to talk to them about it and to tell you guys about it because I'm definitely excited to see the fruition of this project. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Happy to be here. Thank you. All right. So can you guys just tell me what Seasons of Love is? Where did the concept come from? What is it? Yeah. So Season of Love came about originally, um, Kristen, Ashley, and I were talking about what kind of movies we want to see out there that aren't being represented for queer women. Um, and one of our favorite types of movies is holiday movies. It was around Christmas, I think. In the lead up to Christmas, we were lamenting the fact that once again, there would be a holiday season without a holiday movie for us. And we were talking about what we can do about that. And the answer is, let's do it ourselves. Um, so we, we wanted to make queer holiday movies, we put out a uh, call for pitches uh, and did a competition and were overwhelmed with the um, submissions from people who had amazing ideas for holiday movies centering queer women. And we ended up picking three pitches, one of which was Cats. Um, so now I'll hand it over to Cat to tell us a bit about the story. <laughs> There's three stories that kind of go along and each of them had their own um, inspiration, but I essentially just wanted to touch on, you know, specific themes and then from those themes develop stories that um, correlated to those themes, like uh, the theme of found families and, and uh, chosen families, which is something that I think a lot of queer people are very familiar with. It's a shared experience. And then I also thought about, you know, the theme of communication. A lot of times when communication is presented in queer films, it's a, a lack of communication between a couple, uh, essentially, you know, the whole lead up to um, when are they going to find out that I have a crush on them, you know, these, these unrequited feelings of love that uh, largely are in part due to the fact that um, queer people can't really, they're, they're, some of them are afraid to, to come out and to you know, admit that they have feelings for the people they're attracted to. So I wanted to instead write the deaf character and and um, and then a woman who can't speak ASL. So I wanted it to be more of a of a of a fun representation of of communication barriers, not something that is almost a trope when it comes to queer movies. Um, but yeah, they each of the three stories kind of had their own inspiration. That's incredible. I think those are themes that will really resonate with queer viewers a lot. Fa Found Family is one of my favorites, to be honest. So uh, what made Telefilms believe Seasons of Love would be such a successful project? What about it stood out to you guys? Um, I was the first one to read it. So I think, and I immediately, I even think in the middle of it, I wrote to Kat and I was like, oh my God, I am in love with this. I haven't even finished it. This is fantastic. And there was, you know, it has a, a bit of a love actually vibe to it because there's three very distinct couples, but they all intersect in kind of three different spots in the movie. And the characters were all very different. They had their own voice and they were very rich. And as Kat mentioned, there were these three amazing themes that all kind of came together and I thought there is something in this for everyone like anyone who watches this will love all the couples but one I know will for whatever reason will particularly speak to to different people um because of their own uh life you know uh history 
and it just it's also just really cute like you just read it and you just absolutely fall in love with all of these all of these characters and they're just it's just fun cute everything that you want in a holiday movie that just makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside that's fantastic i mean that's what we look to movies for is to see something of ourselves reflected in their journeys so uh in what format will Seasons of Love be released then? And when are you hoping to have the project available for people to see? Well, uh, so it's going to be a movie. Um, and we are looking to go into production in late May into early June. And then, I mean, we want it out this holiday season. You know, we are hoping that, you know, we can go into post and do all the needed things. And so we're, you know, we are looking potentially at doing a theatrical release um, or doing at least screenings in different cities across the country and having some of the actors and the producers and myself to be there. And then it will probably go and live um, somewhere like on Vimeo where you can download it or rent it. And then it eventually will live and sort of rest for a very, very long time on telofilms.com. So that's kind of the plan uh, right now, but we definitely want it out this Christmas season. That is the goal. We are committed to having uh, our Christmas stories being told this season, even if it's just one. I mean, I'm, we're, you know, you always want there to be more out there, right? Like it's nice to be the one, but at the same time, it's sort of sad. So for anyone else who's making a Christmas movie, please let's have like at least maybe two this year. But if not, you will have Season of Love. I'm so excited. I was I was so hoping you were going to say this year, and I'm I'm even more excited to hear that you're going to do some screenings. That's incredible. I if there's anyone anyone that's anywhere close to me, I'm definitely going to go. So, what fundraising platforms are you using to raise money for the production costs? We are using Indiegogo.com. Um, it's one that we've Tello's done a couple of um, fundraising campaigns, and we really like Indiegogo. Um, probably because we know it better than the, than any of them, but uh, but we also just think it's a, it's a really solid platform. So we are, you can find Season of Love on Indiegogo. So what's your goal for fundraising? How much money do you need to bring the story to life? Well, we, we need more than our goal, but like I, I say in the video, we were, we're really lucky. We've had some amazing supporters and who want to invest in the project. And they, you know, said like, listen, we really want the community behind this. So why don't you crowdfund and we'll match, you know, dollar for dollar what you what you crowdfund. So our goal is 30,000 um, and, you know, we're 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 looking good. We're not quite 50 percent there yet, but but we're really, really close. I think we're at 43 percent right now. And, you know, we're we've been able to announce um, already a, uh, an additional cast member with Jessica Clark. Hopefully we're, we're waiting on a few more um, that are out there who we're seeing tapes for that we have asks for. So we're hoping to announce a few more before the end of the campaign just to get people super excited about it. That's incredible. I really hope that all of you listeners will check out the campaign and see if this, this is something you'd like to donate your resources to because honestly, it's something that I think is needed. It's a it's a space in our culture that hasn't really been filled very much. And it's a, it's a story that needs to be told. So you kind of touched on this a little bit, but uh, let's hear from our, our two producers. How are you planning to let people know about seasons of love? How are you going to introduce it to a wider audience aside from screenings? How are you going to let people know that this project exists? Um, well, a lot of our community is online. So social media is a big way to get out the word in terms of, uh, the fundraising aspect of it and also getting people to show up at the screenings and to check it out online as well. Um, we use Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. So we're on all of those. Uh, you can find us at Telefilms mm -hmm. on each of those platforms um, and you can see all the updates we're posting about Season of Love every day. Yeah. We, we also have a small presence on Tumblr. Um, so we, we do uh, try, we know there's a lot of fans on Tumblr as well, but, um, yeah, I mean, social media is, uh, incredibly important, uh, for getting the word out. Great. I will absolutely add links to all of your social media as well. Um, how has the response been on social media? What have people been saying about this project once you let them in on it? 
but people, I think everybody who hears about a project like this is just excited that somebody's doing it because it's one of those things that every year, a lot of people are like, why hasn't this happened? Why doesn't Hallmark make a movie like this? Like, where is our queer holiday romance? So when you tell people that you're actually doing it, there's a lot of excitement. So we're getting a very good response in that sense. Yeah. I, you know, I think the other thing, and, and I've been tweeting about this personally, but I think, you know, it's interesting that we're running this campaign right around the same time that, you know, One Day at a Time is, was canceled on Netflix and uh, that, you know, Winona Earp isn't happening. And it's like every time we find these great shows that we really love that have great representation and speak to our community, you know, it's kind of like a white dude who's either messing it up or saying no or canceling it. And so I, you know, we're really trying to let people know that by supporting this project and supporting Tello, you know, you have female queer filmmakers who uh, are doing our best to make content for the community. And the more that, you know, we can get that out and the more that it's supported, the more content that we're able to make. And, you know, we won't be shutting something down because it just doesn't speak to us for whatever reason. Yeah, the great thing about crowdfunding and I think why it's so important right now is that it allows more queer filmmakers and people like us who want to make this content for our community. It gives us a, the ability to do that without having to go through the gatekeepers of mainstream media. So it really gives our community a chance to get our voices out there. It's so important. And as someone who is devastated when One Day at a Time got canceled, like, it's more important than ever because when we do get the representation, we don't know how long it's going to last. Yeah, and is. also having it from the source, from queer filmmakers and content creators is so, it makes it so much more authentic and real and it's just needed. It's needed. You're listening to The Lesbian Talk Show. TheLesbianTalkShow.com, your hub of podcast information. Do you have any advice for authors and potential filmmakers and creators of all kinds who want to expand their audience, specifically uh, queer women creators and sapphic creators? So for me, I, I'm, I have a background. I was an English teacher for five, six years, seven years. Um, and I, you know, learned from, from my wife, thankfully that, uh, that, your your self worth your self worth your your measure of success uh, should be about what makes you happy, and while teaching made me happy, it it wasn't something that I really felt fulfilled in. So the first thing you have to do is you have to agree with yourself that that writing is it's absolutely one hundred percent what you what you want to do is it's what m makes you happy, not successful. It's what makes you happy, um, and then after that you just have to you have to write, you have to sit down and write, you have to not clean your house and, and, you know, wor worry about all the little things and all the things that make you procrastinate. You just have to write. And then once you get a project that you, you are um, happy to share, you, uh, you start pitching and you go through the process of pitching and then you listen to the critiques and, and you, you have to believe that the people who do give you crit critiques want to see you succeed so you take them and then you make your story better and then you you keep at it and you keep at it and then you get to the point where you you have something special and hopefully someone else sees that it's special too i mean that's but that's speaking from my own experience i i, I think i got extremely lucky this is my my first feature film script um that i've ever written and and i think I, it was just the right time um yeah i just got lucky so <laughs> but but cat also had a talent and she had a script so it's one thing to be lucky but it's like you have to also be prepared that when it's time when you have the opportunity you're ready to go and you have something that's good i was just gonna say the other thing um is to just get out there and network as much as you possibly can too because we had met cat before we'd even started working with cat and then we before we'd even done our previous project that cat was involved with so we, I think we first met her three years ago now at the first yeah. Klexicon yeah. even. So getting out there, going to events where there are people who are interested in the same things as you, who are people where there are going to be people who are going to be producing the things you want them to produce and just making those connections um, is, a, is a really important thing, thing to do from the get-go. Yeah. 
and and I will I'll also give Kat a lot of credit because um, she won't say this, but the thing and I, and I also sort of I'm calling me a bit of an a hole. But when I so I had met Kat at at uh, Clexicon in 2018 because she had done a pitch a pitch to production uh, with me, and then when I when she was involved in the project Passage, we got to spend a lot more time together. She. She, uh, or her wife rather said, you know, was she pitched to you at Clexicon? And I felt really bad because I did not remember. <laughs> but when it was ready for, when, when I said to Kat, like, listen, we're doing another one and I think you should submit. She had a script that was amazing and this opportunity that she had. So, you know, just because I didn't choose or Tello didn't pick her first pitch, she didn't just stop. She didn't give up. She kept going out, she kept networking, she kept meeting. And as someone who reads a lot of scripts, goes to a lot of network w w networking events, you hear scripts and stories and ideas all the time. It's, it's the currency of this industry. And so you're literally like barraged with it on a daily basis. So it's the more you can get out and network and make connections and build relationships with people, just like Danielle was saying, and Clexicon's a great place for that. There's some queer YouTube events that are a great place for that. So anytime you can get out, get in front of producers and and network and get to know them, the, there's a more likelihood that when it's time for you to send something in, they're gonna be paying more attention. I could not agree more. And I'm so grateful that you shared that, that advice with all of us because I think it's so incredibly relevant. And um, that was that was the other thing I was going to bring it around to. If people have a story that they want to submit to Tello, when are you guys open for pitches? What are the opportunities where people could pitch to you? Yep. Well, we always have a pitch to production at Clexicon. So if anyone's going to be uh, there, you're welcome to join the pitch to production at Clexicon. We also open up usually sometime in the summer our pitch to production contest that's that's a non-holiday pitch to production um and the second time is i i think i'm looking at daniel and ashley because to see if this is right but i think we might continue to do the holiday pitch to production because we just really want to continue to put out holiday movies for the queer community so we we have two different times of the year that you can send in and you don't have to have a full script we if we like your pitch we like your idea the two projects who uh, that are in, in development right now, um, Christmas at the Ranch and Mary and Gay, that one pitched to production, did not have us have anything written. They just had a really good idea that we ended up really liking. And so now we're working with them to develop their screenplays. So there's two times during the year. One is holiday specific and one is non-holiday specific. That's awesome. I will be sure to include links to some of that information, especially Clexicon is a great way to network. I'm going to be there at my own table. Yay! I'm hopefully going to go to some of those pitch to production panels. I'm really excited. Um, and so my, my final question, how can my listeners help you guys make this a reality? Please tell us what we can do to make sure that Seasons of Love becomes available this Christmas season so we all can enjoy it. Well, please go to our Indiegogo page and support us um, at whatever level you can. And also please spread the word. Um, post about it on your social medias. Tell your friends, anybody who might be interested in supporting the film and direct them all to the Indiegogo campaign so that we can get it made. Okay, so I, I will say this about the subject of money. You might feel like a couple bucks won't make a difference, but honestly... <laughs> being able to support these kinds of queer independent projects, honestly, it is a values system. It is a way to put something into the world that you believe in and that will benefit your community. So whenever I see projects like this, I always want to give what I can. And even if I can't give money to give my time and attention and viewership and to let other people know who might be able to chip in a few bucks. I mean, that is so helpful to making these projects into a reality and it's so valuable to all of the viewers who are starved for content like this it's important so i would highly encourage you to share this around to throw in a few bucks when you can to talk about it to go check it out just it's it's a great opportunity to make something awesome and you can be a part of it and that's honestly an exciting gift when you get to be a part of making something like that so 
Thank you guys so much for being on the show, for talking about Seasons of Love. Do you have any final comments? No, we just want to thank you so much for having us on and for giving us a part of your platform and your audience and and um, putting this in a, in a time frame that is going to be the most helpful for us. So we just um, absolutely thank you for your help and support in this. Honestly, it's my pleasure. It's something I really believe in and something I, as a viewer, want to see. So part of the motivation is selfish. I want to watch this thing. So uh, That's the other thing I will say. Kat has written such, such a great script. As soon as any of the actors have read it, they're like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I love it. It's great. And so when you have that kind of response from actors, it's just so fantastic. So we know that you all will like it too. I am absolutely sure that all of my listeners will love this and will be eager to support it. So thank you so much for being on the Lesbian Talk Show. It was such a pleasure to talk with all of you about Seasons of Love and about producing in a slightly different medium than I usually discuss on this podcast. If you want to hear more, please go to the Lesbian Talk Show's Patreon page, where you can hear exclusive content unavailable anywhere else. And if you want to continue the conversation about Seasons of Love or the podcast or anything else queer, then please go to the Lesbian Talk Show's Facebook group where you can join in the conversation. Thank you and have a wonderful two weeks.